What's up and welcome to the episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're reviewing the HP Omen 15Z. Is this the laptop of the year? I'm, I'm leaning towards yes. Now before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all the people that are subscribing to the channel. It means so much to me that uh, more and more of you are checking out my videos. And it especially means a lot to me if you guys hit that bell notification and mark it to all. If you don't do that, then it's entirely up to the YouTube algorithm whether or not you even get a notification for when I release a video. Without further ado, let's hop right into this review. Here we go. The HP Omen 15Z is one of the thin and light, moderately priced laptops. Now the model we have here has the eight core Ryzen 7 4800H with a GTX 1660 Ti. These are, I think, the two best mid price to budget range options that you can get in a laptop. Now, this also has a 144 Hertz display. It also has a 512 gig SSD and 16 gigs of dual channel memory. This is a lot of computer for only $1,300. And the real price, realistically, is probably 1200 to 1250 because oftentimes HP puts these laptops on sale. When you compare what you get in this machine to the vast majority of laptops out there, this is just such an impressive bang for the buck. Now, when it comes to ports, this laptop has a nearly perfect port selection. We've got three USB A's, a USB C, a full size SD card reader, Ethernet port, HDMI, mini display. We've got almost everything. The main two things we're missing here is USB-C power delivery charging, which would allow you to extend your battery life. And the second big thing is Thunderbolt 3 support, which that's an Intel proprietary thing. So you wouldn't really expect this on an AMD machine anyway. Now the keyboard feels great, has good travel and has excellent bright backlighting. Now it's not a multicolor keyboard, but the backlighting is fairly bright, which allows you to see it in a brighter environment. But more importantly, all the symbols are lit up and it's evenly backlit. So two giant thumbs up there. And I really like the layout on this keyboard. We've got those full size arrow keys set off to the right, which make them really easy to find. Then we've got dedicated home and page up, page down, pause and insert buttons located above the arrow keys, just like on a desktop keyboard. Now we're missing a number pad here, but other than that, this is like a fantastic, like top of the line, ultra premium feeling keyboard. Now the touchpad is responsive. It's very functional. I have no complaints other than the fact that the texture itself is more of a plastic feel. It doesn't feel as premium as the glass touchpads on other machines. And the second complaint is that it's easier to click at the base of the touchpad and harder to click near the top. Now this laptop feels well built. It has a fairly sturdy overall chassis with a little bit of flex around the keyboard. The main concern is that when you close the lid, there is a gap between the screen and where the keyboard rests. And normally, most laptops have a ridge around the sides of the keyboard to give additional support to that display so it doesn't flex. So if you stack anything on top of the display, it kind of bends in. This might affect long-term durability, especially if you're not particularly careful. For example, a college student might want to put this in a backpack with a bunch of textbooks. Well, if you cram this thing in there side by side with a bunch of textbooks, and then it's wedged up against the back of the screen, Screen, it might just have just the right angle to put a lot of pressure on the back of the display and potentially damage it over time. So that's really my only concern when it comes to the build quality of this machine. Other than that, it feels really, really good. Now the display is going to be an excellent gaming display and general use display at 316 nits and 92% sRGB measured by my Spider 5 Elite. This display is slightly above average for most 144 Hertz displays for both brightness and color gamut. The only weakness to this display is that contrast is a little bit low at 650 to one. Now I really love the fact that we're getting this high of a quality display on a sub $1,500 notebook. It's kind kind of hard to find the whole package at this price point. So that's kind of what we're going for. And we're going to see kind of at the end whether or not I think this thing is everything where it's missing one of those key features that users really, really need. Now the battery life on this thing is excellent. I was able to get about five and a half hours of Netflix runtime. So if you browse the web, you might be able to get a little bit more. And if you set it to airplane mode and reduce the brightness, I could see you maybe getting eight to 10 hours of just writing a Word document or light office tasks. And of course, while gaming, the battery life will be significantly reduced because that Nvidia GPU will just suck up the juice. Now the power limits of this machine are decent. We got 78 watts of power being put through to the GPU and 46 watts of power being put through the CPU during a dual 
heavy stress load, meaning we're maxing the CPU and GPU at the same time. And when rendering with just the CPU, the throttle package power went up to 53 and a half watts. So how did this machine fare in my benchmarks and gaming tests? For 3D Mark Time Spy graphics, we got a little bit over 5,700, which outperforms the RTX 2060 Max-Q and the Zephyrus G14, while falling a little bit behind the full performance RTX 2060 in the other Omen 15T, which is the Omen 15Z's brother. For 3D Mark Time Spy points per pound, we got a little bit over 1,200, which is about middle of the pack overall, which makes sense because this is a like budget GPU in a moderately sized device. For points per dollar though, we had superb performance at 4.39. This is far above the average of most laptops and that really goes to show the bang for the buck that the Omen 15Z has. When it comes to Cinebench R20 Multi, this tops the charts for traditional laptops. Now I did recently review a 16 core Evoc that just freaking decimated the competition. If it wasn't for that one, this machine would be top of the line Cinebench R20 performance. Now when it comes to points per pound, this again is top of the line, tying the Zephyrus G14 point per pound, which is just freaking awesome because this is such a budget oriented machine and you're getting so much CPU performance. Now when it comes to points per dollar Cinebench R20, this thing freaking killed it. If you're looking for CPU performance on a budget, look no further. The HP Omen 15Z has it all and it's at a very reasonable price point as well. When it came to my handbrake 4K render time, this thing crushed it at seven minutes and 59 seconds, outperforming the vast majority of laptops. The only laptops that really beat it were desktop CPUs. And that just goes to show you, holy crap, if you're looking for a machine to render things or do CPU oriented tasks, the Omen 15Z is fantastic, especially for the price point. Now the Omen 15Z has three primary power profiles and this also directly affects how the fan behaves. You have comfort, default, and performance, and you can turn on max fan for any of those three profiles as well. Now when it comes to fan noise, this laptop can be a little bit awkward. The only power profile with reduced fan noise is the default power profile with default fan noise enabled. So if you're looking to game on reduced fan noise, you're gonna have to go with that default mode, but the downside here is that we have significantly increased temperatures when you're running this mode. Now when you run this machine in max fan mode, in performance mode, you're getting solid temperatures with 63 degrees on the GPU and 85 degrees on the CPU. The CPU is not super cool, but that's not bad either. 85 is decent and you're not gonna run into any throttling issues at that temperature either. You can see that when it comes to clock speed, we did have significantly reduced CPU clocks when we ran comfort mode. You can see 32 and 90. Default mode also had some thermal throttling, thus reducing your CPU performance as well. But in performance mode with max fan on or not on, we got the same performance at 4.07 or 08. So honestly, it's like there's no middle ground with this machine. You either run it with max fans and max performance, or you run it on super quiet fans and really high temperatures. There's no middle ground here and it's kind of sad. What we really need here is a power profile with moderate fan noise, but not extreme, while still maintaining better temperatures. Now, when it comes to games, we got excellent performance in nearly every title that we tried. The only one that's like on the verge of not really being very playable is Red Dead Redemption 2 on Ultra, where we only averaged 45 FPS, but it's still a fairly smooth experience. It's not super choppy. Uh, and so I would say it's still playable on Ultra, but if I was playing it, I'd probably just knock the, the settings down just a little bit to get me closer to that 60 plus frame rate in single player games. In Valorant, which is one of those esports titles, we managed to average 171 FPS, which is great because it's well above the 144 Hertz refresh rate of the display, allowing you to fully play the game. Like even if we were getting 300 FPS, it wouldn't matter because a 170 and 300 are both above the 144 hertz refresh rate of the laptop anyway. So how does this machine's performance compare to other laptops out there at 84 FPS in Far Cry 5? We're right in the middle of the pack, uh, and, and we're, we're right in the middle of the pack of a bunch of laptops that largely cost a little bit more than this one. So that's a good thing. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we got 74 FPS, and again, we're beating some of the 
RTX 2060 laptops out there and losing to some of the RTX 2060 laptops, which makes sense. The RTX 2060 is a little bit faster GPU than this one, uh, and it costs a little bit more. So the fact that we're getting so close to the same performance as an RTX 2060 is a great thing. When it came to speaker loudness, this, this machine just doesn't have very much volume, only 70.6 decibels. But the good news here is that the sound that it does make is clean and is very enjoyable to listen to. It just doesn't get very loud. So I've been talking about this laptop in a whole bunch of different ways. What are some drawbacks to this machine? Well, first of all, HP installs a lot of bloatware. You've got some antivirus, you got some VPN, you got like video players, music players, just freaking remove all these applications and HP, you stop it. No more bloatware, I'm tired of it. We've been dealing with it for years. Just stop it, cut it out. We don't want pop-ups. The second con I would say is that we have no Windows Hello, no webcam sign-in. We do have a webcam, by the way, that's a pro, but no Windows Hello sign-in and we don't have a fingerprint sign-in either though those tend to be very gimmicky anyway. We just don't have higher end GPU options. Like I would love to see an RTX 2070 Max-Q in this machine, maybe at like $1,400, $1,500. Can we do that? That would be awesome, because then we get the power of an eight core Ryzen with the higher end GPU, and we just get a great bang for the buck machine that, that performs better than a GTX 1660 Ti. I don't know why manufacturers aren't uh, putting in higher end GPUs. I think there's some back end dealings going on here, not allowing it. I'm not sure. If you guys know why we're not getting higher end NVIDIA GPUs paired with AMD processors, I would love to know. The last huge question is, should you even buy this at all? Because we have the RTX 3000 series GPUs having been launched very recently, and we don't know when the new 3000 series GPUs will go into laptops. And the simple fact is, we don't know. It'll probably be like two to six months before we see a replacement for the Omen 15Z. Like I'm talking in early September here, so I'm expecting maybe a replacement for this machine, maybe in like January, most likely. So if you need a machine now, this I think is probably the best laptop that money can buy on a per dollar basis because of its overall premium feel, its great performance in both games and in CPU tasks, its overall build quality, the battery life on it. It's just, it's got basically everything that you could want except the two main weaknesses for this laptop really are the speakers and the fact that you have those two extremes in the power profiles where you have very little fan noise but super high temperatures and you have very high fan noise good temperatures, but very loud fan noise. So if you can put up with loud fan noise, you're gonna have a great experience. Just throw on some headphones, it's gonna be great. It's so hard to not recommend this laptop. It's basically, I think my favorite laptop so far in 2020, it's that good. There's links in the description if you wanna check out updated pricing, and if you do use those links to buy, it does go to help support Gizmo Slip Tech, and I thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Hwah!